Welcome to Lingua Latina Tutorials with Mr. K, Pensum D. This video explains the new grammar and syntax found in chapter 37 of the Lingua Latina series. It is meant to accompany the Latina Disco text available from Focus Bookstore and the Pensum D worksheets available from 50%latin.blogspot.com or christianlanguage.com. So let's get into the text and see the new syntax in chapter 30. Seven. The first sentence I want to look at is, uh, here we'll look at uh, line 16, starting with Sola in regia erat filia, nomina lawinia, jam matura viro. So there was uh, one daughter in the palace named Lavinia, now ready for a husband, matura viro. Matura, from matura sa'um, which just means ready or prepared, and then uh, um, takes the dative here, wiro. Uh, so remember that wir is one of those uh, second declension nouns <coughs> that starts, its nominative ends in r. So wir, but then follows the regular uh, second declension pattern like servus. Uh, the next feature I want to point out is in line 21. We'll start here with Equus uh, Trojanus, Dum Latinus in Italia, in pacca dia turna, diuturna regnat Troia seu ilium, clarissima asiae urps, post bellum decim anorum tandem a graecis capta est. So the Trojan horse. While uh, King Latinus was ruling in Italy in a long during a long period of peace, Troy, or Ilium, if you will, uh, a very famous city of Asia, uh, at last was, after ten years of war, was captured by the Greeks. So the feature I want to point out here is the, um, the use of the present tense regnat from regnara to rule. This is just third person singular, present indicative active uh, with doom, but I translated it as, as past tense uh, because the rest of the sentence is past tense. The city was captured. So, and this is a historical event. So, doom, Lati while King Latinus uh, ruled in Italy in a long uh, period of peace. But why, so why is this present? Doom, the word doom, while in Latin, most frequently will take a present tense verb. Even though we'll translate it as past, it takes kind of a historical present, which we'll see more of that in this chapter, um, a present tense that gives more vividness to the description. Uh, and uh, just uh, be aware, when you write sentences with doom, that you want usually to use the present tense with it. And line 23 and 24, we have Graeci uh, enim cum urbem vi expugnare non possent dolo usi sunt. So for the Greeks, when they weren't able to destroy uh, the city by force, they used a trick. So the, the new feature here is uh, we've got uh, the subjunctive of possum, with possent, our uh, imperfect subjunctive. So why do we have imperfect subjunctive here? Uh, we're in a cum clause. And uh, so what kind of cum clause? We're going to learn in this chapter some other forms of cum clauses. Um, and uh, you need to be able to recognize the differences mainly between those that take the subjunctive, like this kind, cum possent, and the kind that take the indicative. There are two that take the subjunctive, and there are three that take an indicative verb. So this, um, this kind of a cum clause is a, a cum causal, we call it. Causal because it, it has a, there's a logical connection. It's a, it means more like since or because. So the, for the Greeks, because they weren't able to destroy the city by force, so rather than rather than when, uh, a pure temporal sense. 
So we'll call this uh, cum causal. Understand it means since or because. In line 34, we have uh, said ubi primum equum ligneum in litora collocatum viderunt, uh, stupentes constaterunt et molem equi mirabantur. So we have, uh, but when, when first they saw the wooden horse uh, placed on the shore, uh, shocked, being shocked, they decided, uh, or they, they stood there shocked and marveling, and were marveling at the size of the horse. This ubi primum idiom here, with widerut, the perfect tense, when you see when first they saw the wooden horse on the shore, uh, when you have ubi plus perfect, it's often best to translate it as postquam or after. And so in this context, but after they saw the wooden horse placed on the shore, uh, being they stood there shocked and were marveling. So um, you'll see this also for ut later in the chapter, that ut plus the perfect means after. In line 37, we have, uh, we'll start with 36, al i um ut donum minervae dei Trojanis benignae sacratum intra muros duci et in arche locari jubebant, al i donum grecorum suspectum in mare precipitandum et flamis urendum esse consebant, uh, etc. It goes on. Uh, so some, so we have alii, 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 some and others and others as our basic structure of the sentence here. So we have uh, as our subject. So some, uh, some were uh, ordering is our main verb. So some were ordering that uh, etum, this is the horse, uh, some were ordering uh, uh, that the it, that it was a gift to Minerva, uh, the the kind or good goddess of the Trojans, uh, was sacred. That it was sacred to Minerva. Uh, should the sacred gift should be led within the walls and placed in the um, in the citadel. Uh, so we have here the the new feature is. Uh, benignae uh, dei uh, Trojanis. So wh what case do we have here for Trojanis? We have the dative case. And why do we have dative? It's, um, it's because we have the, uh, the goddess kind to the Trojans. It's, a, it's an adjective that takes a dative, kind to these people. Uh, we saw that, like with matura wiro, ready for a husband, kind to the Trojans. Um, the next new feature is in line 41. And we have, Itta dum populus incertus in contraria sententias dividitur, dividitur la aquan. Uh, Neptuni sacerdos ab summa arche decurrens quive suos monuit ne dan nais confiderent. So we have the, thus, while the people uh, uncertain what to do, uh, while the people uncertain what to do are divided into different opinions, Laocoon, the priest of Neptune, uh, running down from the top of the citadel, uh, warned his citizens not to trust the Greeks. So uh, what it did a tour here uh, is divided. Uh, it's third person singular, present indicative passive, uh, speaking about a past event. So thus while the people, the uncertain people, uh, are divided uh, or um, certain people are divided into different opinions. Well, we would translate this as a past tense in uh, in our in normal English idiom when we're talking about um, story. We're doing storytelling. We usually use past rather than this vivid present tense historic present. So, um, 
remember that with a doom clause, like here where you have a, a storytelling doom, thus while the people uncertain uh, are divided, we're going to translate this past. So while the people uncertain were divided into different opinions, Laocoon, the priest of Neptune, uh, running down, did these things. Uh, in line 46, we have... Uh, this is Leakawan warning the people. He says, Out ula putatis dona carrera dolis dana danaum? Or uh, do you think that uh, ula dona, any gifts um, of, the, of the Greeks, carrera dolis lack uh, tricks? Do the gifts lack tricks? Uh, carrera, to lack or to be without, takes an ablative of separation, which is what you, you get here, to be without, to be lacking uh, the ablative. In line 56, we have uh, cum teram at tegisent capitibus erectis oculisque ardentibus troianos perteritos prospiciunt. So when they had reached the land, uh, with their heads held up and with their eyes burning, they look out on the terrified Trojans. Here is uh, another example uh, of a present tense verb, prospiciunt, being used in uh, storytelling, kind of like a doom clause. We see doom up here above while he is sacrificing. We translate the immolat as past tense, while Laocoon was sacrificing uh, a bull uh, on the altar. Uh, here we have, uh, when they had reached the land, we do have here with atigisent, the pluperfect, uh, a, a, pluperfect uh, a, a pluperfect subjunctive, third person plural, and uh, we've got that in a cum in a cum clause, this is a cum narrative clause or a storytelling clause, but um, so in 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 subordinate clauses like this, the verbs tend to stay in the past tense, like with cum or qui clauses, but the other verbs in the storytelling will be in the present, like prospiciunt, even though they're telling about past events. So when they had reached the land, with their heads held up and their eyes burning. They looked out. We're going to translate that as the past. They looked out on the terrified, uh, looked forward on the terrified Trojans. Okay, the next new feature is in line 61. And so here we have Yam bis corpus eius medium amplectuntur bis colo longa corpora sua circumdant. So now, uh, they wrap themselves around the middle of his body twice, beasts. Uh, and they wrap uh, their bodies around, their long bodies around his neck twice. So we've got here uh, with Kolo an example of a, a dative with a special verb, kirkumdant. Kirkumdant takes the dative. Uh, it also takes an accusative, so it takes two objects. They encircle, the thing that they're actually using to encircle is in the accusative here, their bodies. They encircle their bodies to his, to his neck. We would say around his neck. Um, so the, the first part of this compound verb, the kirkum, really is what's taking this dative, this dative object. They wrap around his neck. Uh, the next uh, new feature, oh, in, in, in line 60, we need to go back here also because uh, when Yevat is an example of another, um, a, a past tense verb, when Yevat, he was coming, or qui, when Yevat, who was, was coming to, the, for a, to help his wretched sons. This is uh, talking about Leakwan. Um, so when Eabot 
even though we're, we have present tense verbs around it, koripiunt, they seize or they grab hold of him, then they grab hold of the father himself, who was coming to bring help. Just remember that in these qui clauses, instead of um, keeping things in the present, like uh, qui when it, who is coming to bring help to his sons, uh, the subordinate clauses tend to be in the keep their past tense verbs. The next new feature is in the next new feature is in line 68. And so here we have tum uh, vero cuncti troiani novo pavore perturbantur et lea la oco untem poenas meritas minervae dedisse dicunt quod hasta scelerata scelerata sacrum robur laeseret. So, um, that, but then uh, all of the Trojans were um, bothered or disturbed with a new kind of a fear, and they say that Laocoon uh, gave, literally, gave the deserved penalties to Minerva. We would say paid the penalty, paid the deserved penalty to Minerva, but notice how literally it's constructed, uh, that they gave the deserved penalties, plural, to Minerva. Minerva here uh, is in the dative case. It's an object of, um, of this idiom to pay the penalty, uh, the penalty to Minerva, merit, uh, poinas minervae. The next new feature is in line 72. So here we have, Ergo parte murorum destructa machina illa hostibus armatis plena magno labore in urbem trahiotur funibus, uh, etc. Uh, so we have, therefore, with part uh, of the walls destroyed, that uh, war machine, that's the horse, uh, full, uh, filled up or full of armed enemies, uh, is uh, was dragged into the city with ropes with a lot of uh, with hard work magno labore uh, while the boys and stuff and the girls are singing and being happy etc so here the new feature or the feature I want to point out is uh, the ablative with plena we have plena hostibus armatis full of we would say full of armed enemies uh, and plena can take the genitive, but it also can take the ablative, as it does here. Filled up with, we would say, filled up with armed enemies. The next new feature is in line 83. And we have, uh, cum, cum yam sol occidisset et nox obscura terum tegeret, Trojani fesi somno se dederunt. So while, uh, when the sun had already set, and dark night was uh, covering the earth, the tired Trojans gave themselves to sleep. So here we have uh, okadiset, which is the uh, third person singular pluperfect subjunctive from okidera to, uh, to, to set. This, uh, why do we have a pluperfect subjunctive here? We have subjunctive because uh, we're in a, a cum clause. Uh, what, kind of a, what kind of a cum clause are we in? We're in a cum clause, which is called the cum narrative clause. Cum narrative means that se several things are happening in our story at the same time. So while this thing is happening, something else is going on that's kind of connected to it. So when the sun had already set and, that, and dark night had, was covering the earth, uh, and connected to that is that the tired Trojans gave themselves to rest because it's now nighttime. So cum narrative. So before we saw cum causal, so when it means since or because, and now in a cum narrative clause, we see that uh, uh, when two things are happening in our story at the same time, we use a subjunctive with it as well. So the next new feature is in line 91. Go ahead to 91. And here we have, I'll uh, we'll start with 90. Dum haec aguntur troiani sine cura dormiebant 
Eneis Aeneas, dux Egregius, Anchisa et Venera de Anatus. So while these things are happening, um, the Trojans uh, were sleeping. So we're going again, we're in a historic present, so let's go in the past tense. While these things were happening, the Trojans, without a concern, without a care, were sleeping. Among, who, among them was Aeneas, uh, a famous leader, uh, born from uh, his father Anchises and the goddess Venus. So here we have Anchisa, an ablative singular, uh, ablative of separation here from, with uh, the verb or the participle natus, having been born from Anchises. And again, Venere an, is also an ablative of separation, the goddess Venus. Also, I, I need to point out here that Anchisa, this ablative singular from Anchises, <coughs> is slightly irregular because it's from a Greek name. And so if we were going to decline Anchises, Anchises in the nominative, uh, the accusative is Anchisen, as you see here. So Anchises, Anchisen. And then it follows the first declension for the rest of, for the rest of the way. So we have Anchisai, Anchisai, uh, and then um, and the ablative we have uh, Anchisa with a long, a long A. Our next new feature is in line ninety nine. And here we have Hu uh, Fugena Tedea Te Quis I eat E Repeflamis. So, alas, uh, run away, flee, <coughs> you who were born of a goddess, and snatch yourself out of these flames, she says. <coughs> so, here, um, what we have, uh, Dea, just like we saw above born from a goddess, in line 91, we have uh, here the vocative from that, um, <clears throat> that participle of natus, you born, I remember that second declension nouns like Marcus, when we are addressing that person, uh, we use a short e, so you born from, from a goddess, the ablative of separation here with dea. In line 150 and 151, <clears throat> we have um, uh, Rex Priamus Senex <coughs> ut primum fores fractas et hostes in mediis aedibus vidit manibus infer infirmis arma capit et gladio kingitur atque moriturus et in has hostes progreditur. So King Priam, the old man King Priam, uh, as, as he saw as, as he first saw the doors broken and the enemies uh, in the middle of the, of the temple, or the middle of his, here it's going to be in the middle of his house, uh, he grabs weapons with his weak hands and is girded with a sword and um, about to die uh, sets out against the enemies. A couple of things to point out here. A bunch of historic presents... So in, in our uh, translation, if we're going to do a translation of this, we want to put these into the past tense. So the old man, King Priam, um, after he first saw that the doors uh, were broken and the enemies were in the middle of his house with weak hands, he grabbed hold of his weapons and um, girded himself with his sword, etc. So we're going to put those into the past tense even though they're, pre they're present, because they're historic presents. So the other feature I want to point out here is that we have, um, as we saw before with Ubi and the perfect, uh, from here we have the perfect of Widera uh, to see. So, at ut primum vidit, as first he saw, but in, in idiomatic English, in normal English, we would say after he saw, after he saw uh, that the doors were broken, etc. In line... Uh, 156, we have um, 
start with yam. Yam non telis egemus, sed auxilio deorum. So now we're not, we don't lack weapons, we're not missing weapons, but what we're missing is the auxilio deorum, the help of the gods. Egemus, to go without or to be without, to need or to lack, it means the same basically as Carrera. Like Carrera also takes an ablative of separation. So we're not separated from weapons. We don't, we're not missing or, or going without weapons right now. Uh, we're going without the help of the gods. And the next, the next new feature is in line 159. Uh, we have Huk tandem concede haikara tuebetura omnes aut moriere simu. So, um, just come here. Uh, this altar will watch over all of us. Or, moriere simu. You will die at the same time. Moriere is not an infinitive. It looks like a like a second conjugation infinitive, but but it's not. It's from the deponent mori to die, and so what this is is actually a contracted form of morieris. Uh, you will die. The second person singular future indicative deponent verb. So. Um, and then you see that in the margin that it's moriera is short for morieris. So if you're going to conjugate fully this this future deponent here, future uh, indicative uh, deponent, we would have um, moriar, I will die. Morieris, which is contracted here, is moriera, you will die. Morietur, moriemur, moriemini, and morientur, uh, they will die. The next new feature is in line 193. And let's move ahead to 193. And here we have Ubiyam ad antiquam domum patriam pervenit, anquises pater, quem primum in altos montes portare volebat, ex patria capta fugera recusavit. Uh, so here we have another example of an ubi plus a perfect. Remember that ubi plus the perfect, we're going to translate as after. So ubi yam perwenet. After he came to his, uh, his father's ancient home, uh, his father, uh, father Anchises, whom, uh, whom, uh, he w whom he wanted first to carry into, uh, into the high mountains, uh, refused to, to flee from his captured fatherland. So, ubi plus the perfect is going to be um, translated as after uh, after this thing happened. Uh, and you see that in the margin, post quam. Uh, the next new feature is in line 198. And here we have uh, nolo urbi captae superese. And this is uh, Anchises speaking. He says, I don't want to outlive uh, the city after it's been captured. Or I don't, literally, I don't want to outlive the captured city. Urbi Kapti is a, um, a, dative, a dative case, a uh, combination of a dative uh, noun and adjective, uh, or a participle here. Why is it dative? It's with uh, this compound verb superesse, to survive or to outlive, and this takes the dative case. Uh, in line 204, we have, uh, we'll start with uh, meneputas, in quitte relicto pedems hinc efere posse. Uh, do you think that um, I'm able to uh, to pedem efere, to leave here uh, with you left behind while well, you're left behind. The um, the new feature here is oh that's not the sorry I did the wrong line. What I want to do is actually with C tibi C tibi certum est troiae periturae te tuosque adra patetiano morti morti. 
Here we go. So um, if if it's certain to you that you want to add yourself and your um, and your relatives to the destruction of Troy, uh, the door to death, uh, the door of death lies open to you. So here we have Tibi, a dative case from from tu, tu, uh, tu, 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 tibi, te, te. So if it is certain to you, we would say if if you are certain that uh, you want to add yourself and others, etc. So uh, this idiom, si certum tibi, is a um, it takes it takes the dative. It's the dative case with certum. In line two nineteen, we have. Uh, we'll start with. Um, uh, Talia, I guess. Talia exclamans omnem domum gemitu complebat cum subito uh, mirabile prodigium visum est. So shouting out such things, he was filling the whole house with his groaning when suddenly, so this is a change of, a change of fate, some things, uh, other, this is not a connected idea, it's a, and what we call an adversative idea, when suddenly an amazing omen was seen, or prodigy was seen. Uh, so here we have a cum clause with an indicative verb, cum visum est, when suddenly this was seen. Uh, we, we have a, a, diff, um, a special name for this kind of a cum clause with the indicative, and that is a cum ad adversative clause. Often it'll have something like subito, suddenly, or it shows some kind of a change a change from the original idea, tamen, or something like that. And um, so now would be a good time to quickly review the five different kinds of cum clauses that we've seen. Uh, the first two were subjunctive cum clauses, cum causal, the one where you translate it as since, since this thing happened, then something, um, uh, they made some other decision, we saw that earlier. And then the other one was cum narrative, and that's the storytelling cum. Storytelling cum just means when one thing happens uh, and another thing happens at the same time or before it in the past is uh, in a uh, story format. That's cum narrative. Both of those take subjunctive uh, verbs. But then there are three other kinds of cums that do not take subjunctive, that take uh, indicatives. One of them is this one where you have a change of fortune, and that's called cum adversative, and that one takes the indicative. Then there's the cum iterative, which means something goes on and on and on. So you can translate, whenever I do this, whenever I eat breakfast, uh, I have eggs. That kind of a cum takes the indicative. And then also cum temporal, when it's just a one-time event. Not two events happening at the same time in the past, but just a one-time event. Uh, it, it, then you're going to have a, a, uh, an indicative with that cum. In line, okay, so those are all your cums to review. In line 233, we have, uh, it will start with ipse, ipse te portavo, nec mihi grave erit hoc onus. Uh, so I will carry him myself, nor will he be heavy, nor will this burden be heavy to me. So here we have grawe from grawis. This is the, um, our neuter form of the adjective uh, because onus, a burden or a weight, is a neuter noun. Um, so what we have grawe with mihi, a dative, uh, a dative case uh, pronoun. The reason we have the dative here is that grawis takes the dative heavy to me. Um, Kind of like you saw before with matura, matura wiro, uh, ready for a husband. In line 238, we have, we'll start with, um, neque en mihi fas est res sacras tangera prius quam manus caide uh, cruentas flumina vivo lauero. So he says, uh, for it isn't permitted to me. It's not right for me uh, to touch sacred things before, um, before I have washed my hands, my bloody, my hands bloody with uh, death or with murder uh, in a 
in uh, rushing water, flowing water. So, um, FOSS is the, is the new feature I want to point out here. FOSS is an indeclinable neuter noun. So it, it's going to be neuter, but it is all, um, you can't, it's going to be the same in the nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, and ablative cases, uh, singular and plural. Uh, it means it religiously permitted. You could just translate it as right, you know, for it's not right for me to do this, but understand that it's not religiously right for me to do this. That's what FOSS means. In line 247, Uh, we have, uh, let's start with, um, we could just start with nunc. Nunc, nunc omnis aura, omnis sonus teret, cum parater filio patrique timeat. So this is talking about Aeneas. Uh, so now every breeze uh, is, is terrifying Aeneas. Every sound is terrifying Aeneas. When um, or since. Uh, he is equally afraid for his son and for his father. So, uh, a couple of features here. One, uh, we have a cum clause, cum timeat, and you see the subjunctive here from timera. timera. Uh, he, uh, the regular indicative of timera would be timet, uh, he fears, but here we have timeat, uh, since he fears. What kind of a cum clause is this? This is an example of a cum causal because we're saying because because he uh, equally fears for his son and his father. the The other feature here is we have the dative with timera. Normally, when you fear something, the thing you fear is in the accusative. He fears. Uh, uh, he fears his son would be timet filium, but. Uh, you can also use fear in the sense of being afraid for someone else, that harm could come to someone else. In that case, you use the dative, as you find here with filio and patrique. And then in line 249, uh, we have, um, start with cum, cum anquises per umbram prospiciens fuge mi fili, exclamat, hostes apropinquan. And uh, so we have exclamat here, um, when Anchises, looking out uh, through, the, through the darkness or the shadows, said, uh, shouts, but we would say shouted. It's another example of uh, a, a um, historic uh, kind of a present. Uh, also, notice that we have it in a a cum clause. So what kind of a cum clause do we have here? This is another example of a cum adversative clause because here, if, if we'll read the beginning of the sentence, now uh, they were, uh, they're approaching the gates and they seemed to be safe. Saluiese, when, and so here we have the change of fortune. When sudden, suddenly, we might say, when suddenly, and Caesar looking out through the darkness, shouted, Run away, my son! So, here, um, a cum adversative clause, which is why we have, we don't have a subjunctive with exclama, we have just a regular indicative. And the last, the last feature in line 269, uh, we have another example of FOSS, that indeclinable neuter noun, meaning uh, religiously right or right. So, uh, non sine numine deorum haec eveniunt, nec fas est te hinc cometem portar creusam uh, rex olympi, hoc non sinit. So, not without the will of the gods, um, did these, these things didn't happen without the will of the gods, nor is it right uh, for you or permitted for you to carry Creusa as a companion uh, from here. The king of Olympus is not going to allow this. So here we have FOSS, meaning permitted or, or religiously allowed, uh, again. So those are all of our new features for chapter 37. Thanks for listening.